the last two years that you've been a member. Uh, I just want to say thank you about your services and help and the energy just couldn't happen. These things and the best that we planned that just wouldn't happen. Um, so, from the, just let you know, like, this is our website. This is the primary way to get a hold of us and find out what's going on. It has links to all of our um, places on the internet and here at the, the college where we have our schedule of events posted and our videos that we make here each week that get posted eventually to uh, YouTube and then shared on our video sharing site. Our meetings are Wednesdays from 11 to 1 p.m. in CC3234 over in the new building. Uh, we usually talk about club business and then break out the robots, the Lego Mindstorm robots, play with them if anybody wants to experiment with that. Uh, and talk about project planning. Uh, speaking of projects, uh, we have Linux Fest Northwest uh, coming up April 27th through 29th. That's going to be over in Bellingham Community Technical College. Community College. Um, any of the members, uh, it's open to all students of Cascadia, uh, but we will uh, request that they join the club so they can get on our roster, so they can get on the mailing list, and then uh, get, we need to know a number so we can book the right amount of rooms at the hotel for everybody to stay at and get meals, uh, budgets, and stuff like that. And then uh, we got a spring technology fair we're putting together for May 25th. 1 to 5 p.m. in this room and that room. We're going to have as many speakers as we can book up to four. We've got four hours to fill. Um, we'll be speaking over in that room. And in this room, we'll have different workstations set up with different technologies, different programs, some game design software. Um, hopefully, everything will run smoothly and we can use this room. Um, we don't know what's going to happen next quarter as far as who's going to be using the room at this time. Hopefully it will be the same as business for um, And that is an opportunity for all students to um, put together a slideshow presentation of any of the projects that they've completed over the quarter or in the past since they've been here at Cascadia. And we're going to make a, uh, like a PowerPoint presentation that will be running for uh, a part of the, the presentation. And then we'll have uh, opportunities for you to do a little mini exercises on the computers to kind of give you some hands-on experience with using different software. Uh, maybe setting up a router. I don't know how long that would take, but we'll look at Chris on that to see if we can make some really mini, mini lessons. Uh, so that's basically what we're up to. Um, I want to turn it back over to Brian to introduce our speaker, and we can have some fun. Thank you. So uh, we've also started at the speaker series to uh, have Rebecca Cooper come up and tell a little bit about some of the internships that um, she's been, been uh, discovering and uncovering and uh, out there hunting for. Uh, some really exciting work that's, that's really open, um, kind of a variety, with a variety of businesses, large, small businesses, profit, for-profit, non-profit, uh, projects that would span uh, you know, multiple quarters, projects that might be done in teams, projects that you can do individually in one quarter, uh, some paid, some unpaid, so lots of variety there, and we've really seen the internship uh, opportunities just uh, expand uh, tremendously. So I want uh, Rebecca to tell you a little bit about those, and then she's actually going to introduce the speaker. Well, Brian, Brian pretty much said it all, so that, thank you, Brian. <laughs> um, I'm Rebecca Cooper, the internship and we do have a quite a number of internships available on Brian's, I call it Brian's website. Okay. The internship but, website. The internship website. So if you go to My Cascadia <coughs> and click on classes and internships, you'll be able to view all of the internships that are currently available. Like Brian said, there are some that are paid, some that are not. But you can get credit for all of those. And it's, it's a really important part of your program because it's a requirement. And also, it's a great way to get your foot in the door at companies to find out, you know, that are these companies you can work for. You can, and most importantly, you can get it, you know, something really substantial, something real needed to put on, on your resume. So I highly encourage you to open these doors for students to 
to make those connections. It makes all the difference when you go out to look for justice. So to be able to say, I not only have this education, but I also have this experience. So I highly recommend you look at those. And come and see me. I'm located over in the library annex. Um, so make an appointment to come and see me, either by email. I'm at R. Cooper. Am I writing this down? R. Cooper at Cascadia.edu. R. Cooper at Cascadia.edu. And I'd be happy to meet with you and we can work on a resume and just, you know, get you started in that way. But anyway, John Kinley here, I want to um, introduce him. Um, he is a senior network analyst for Puget Sound Energy. And here's a little bit about John's background. John started working in IT at Gonzaga University in 1985. He built his first Intel, Intel 80286 PC in 1989 and started Eastern Washington's third ISP in 1993 and sold applied research to largest ISP in Eastern Washington in 2000. He worked in system administration for four years, however, began to tire of learning new versions of the operating system every two years. So he decided to focus on the stability of network architecture rather than systems and began the system path toward network engineer and Cisco certification. He currently holds 12 individual Cisco certifications and specialties, including four Cisco professional level certifications. He recently passed the Cisco CCIE Network Security Written Exam and is currently preparing to sit for the lab in San Jose at the end of the year. He's currently the principal architect for Cisco's Trust and Identity Management Solution Architecture and Cisco's Unified Wireless Mobility Architecture at Puget Sound Energy. So please take a moment and welcome John. All these computers running in here makes it hard to get back here. Thank you for not attaching it, Chief Brian. <laughs> I just, can you hear me better? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. nice. I can't hear anything different. Sweet. Okay. Um, so, what I'd like to focus on are the different directions that we can go, specifically with the Cisco technology. People don't realize that in many cases there's a, a, there's a mountain of infrastructure between that PC and the server that sits back in the data center. Um, there is so much infrastructure that you can probably dedicate your lifetime to learning it and not learn at all, which is why I want to focus on these areas because what you'll find is that there's enough diversity. Cisco is not just generic Cisco routing and switching. There's a, a tremendous amount of diversity um, within the technology uh, areas. In fact, there are Cisco breaks it down into specific technology tracks. And what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about these technology tracks. And the, uh, the, the big, uh, do I go enterprise versus service provider? Where do I focus my time? So that you can see, for example, if you want to do the voice stuff, you, know, you can read 
see that the voice engineers are getting paid 300K. So you think, okay, I want to go voice. So if, if you're going to do voice, um, you probably want to focus on the enterprise technologies, okay? As hopefully what this is going to enable you to do, if you decide to follow the Cisco track, it's going to allow you to focus sooner rather than later. Because what you're going to find is you might do like what I did, bundle around in all of the areas for a few years before you find the area that you really like to go. So my objective is to try to help you decide where to focus first. And on that note, I would say it would not hurt to at least delve into each of these just a little bit to find out if this is the direction you want to go, to find out which of these areas you like the best. I was uh, mentioning to Rebecca before I started that uh, you know, I look at the 300K salary myself, and that's why I started playing with the voice technologies. What I realized was that I really liked playing with the voice stuff. <coughs> it's like toys, okay? It's, it's, it hardly even seemed like work. And I didn't even realize that I would like doing that stuff as much as I did until I actually tried it. So that's why I say it's probably not a bad idea if you just at least dabble in each one of these areas a little bit. For example, you might find that you can just really get off on BGP and NPLS. And if you do, don't focus on the enterprise. If, if you really like BGP routing, BGP is the, is the routing protocol of the internet. Uh, while we have multiple uh, interior routing protocols within an organization, within an autonomous system, within a system that is under our control, we can do old OSPF or EIGRP or RIP routing, but on the internet itself, there's only one routing protocol. That's BGP. And if you find that you like working in BGP, service providers probably going to be the area that you want to focus on. And CCIP, the service provider uh, track, would be the area that you would go down there. If you like working with large carrier class enterprise uh, or uh, uh, service provider, I should say. So what I would like to do is, first of all, just mention the fact that there are, and, and before I even start talking about the actual tracks themselves, well, I mean, I'll, I'll back up, I'll come back to that again. Um, there are specific tracks. Uh, everyone would probably begin with the CCNA track. The CCNA is gonna give you a very uh, basic foundation. One of the things I used to like to tell my students is it's very important. Number one, uh, if you don't remember a lot of the stuff tomorrow, don't sweat it. Because repetition is going to be the key to learning this stuff. You have to do it over and over and over and over, which is why the uh, employers like to see experience. And what you need to do is you need to fill in this foundation. You have to do your time. And one of the important things to understand is you might be presented with with a concept that just doesn't, it just doesn't sink in just yet. You just can't quite get your head around it. Okay? But don't let that bother you. And here's the reason why. Because maybe that concept is being presented up here. And what you're going to find is that until we have all these blocks filled in, in the foundation, which is where the CCNA comes in, until we have all these blocks filled in that foundation, some of these other blocks, they just don't, they just don't fit. They, they might just fall right through the cracks. So this is very much uh, where we have to build on top of what we already know. Again, one of the reasons why employers like to see experience as opposed to just uh, book learning. Let me say this about that. A lot of people may poo-poo the certification tracks. Ah, uh, here's paper certification. That's when I usually follow that with, uh, you don't have any paper certs, do you? Because those paper certs will at least get you in the door. One of the things that is important uh, that employers already understand is that the certification process forces you to present an objective measure of what you already know. It's, it's an objective measure that, that they can use as a baseline to have some idea of what you know. And plus, 
The certification process forces you to have to maybe study something that you wouldn't have actually studied on your own. And therefore, and that, what you might find is, well, maybe that's the next uh, concept that's going to get you in the door at your next interview. Or what you may find is that's something that your employer, your current employer, could actually use right now. That maybe they're not doing things as efficiently as they could. So it's all these real subtle um, concepts that we might either just glance over or not quite fully understand that if we don't go and sit for that exam, we may not quite grasp that to the level that we should. So I will always encourage certification. Don't let anybody poo-poo the certs, but understand that the cert is not everything. It will get you in the door, but they want to see some experience as well. You need to be very well-rounded. Okay, so let's go back to the pyramid. So if something doesn't quite stick, don't sweat it. What you're going to find is that stuff that you may have trouble learning today, tomorrow will be very easy. And you almost don't even think about it. But you get to the point where you start, you go back and start learning these routing protocols all over again for the second time. And you think, why was this so hard the first time? Why did this seem so hard? It's, I pick the stuff up like that now. Well, it's because you've got the base filled in. Okay. So I would always encourage, and even if you go, if, if you're going to stay in IT, which I would encourage everybody in this classroom to do, and I'm also very pleased to see that there's a nice, healthy mix of um, uh, men and women in the class. This has traditionally been a very male-dominated field, but I guarantee you the ladies get paid just as much as the men do. Uh, in network engineering. There's no bias uh, when it comes to network engineering. Uh, CCIEs uh, don't make, doesn't make any difference uh, if you're a man or a woman, they make the money. So I'm glad to see that. It's great opportunities uh, for ladies as well as the guys. So even if you're going to go in another direction, say you want to go systems administration, I kind of got burned out on, on building Linux servers and building Microsoft servers and having stuff change every couple of years, and having to relearn stuff. Now, you might like that. Um, one of the nice things about the network engineering side of the house is that we don't see quite as much change. We tend to build on concepts that we already know, and while things continue to advance, we don't just forget about how we were installing Windows 98 uh, last year and learn a Windows NT or Windows 2003 or 2008 this year or I mean I'm constantly struggling with my Outlook 2010 everything's different than it was in my Outlook 2007 you know I can't even put a signature on my email I have to go through and find out how to do things all over again okay? you won't find the same thing in the Cisco network uh, technologies uh, you will find that stuff tends to build and that you, uh, your expert level knowledge that you had last year will still be uh, good uh, this year. I used to build 2003 servers, um, MCSE, uh, in Windows 2003. I feel like a fish out of water if somebody put me in front of a 2008 machine. So you see all that training, all that technology, all that learning, it did me very little good at that time. I don't want to put down the Microsoft program at all. But this is just my opinion, okay? Um, I tend to like, I tend to gravitate towards this more because I can continue to learn or continue to build on what I have already learned and what I know. And I'm, I'm hoping that this will help you make some decisions in the future yourself. Okay, so if something doesn't quite sink in today, don't sweat it. If routing seems like a difficult concept today, don't let that make you shy away uh, from learning these technologies. No matter which direction you go, I would always advocate that you learn something about the routing and switching technologies. Because even if you're in systems administration now, you can't, you don't, um, you don't exist in a vacuum. All these servers are plugged into switches. Either uh, Cisco 1000V virtual switches or uh, 3750 uh, hardware switches, 4507, the, the and 6509, 6513 chassis, the real big switches. All these 
uh, all these devices plug into switches. And it's important for you to understand how the equipment that you're going to work with is going to interface with the rest of the network. And there is a disconnect if you don't. We see it all the time. People who are in our network operations groups uh, that don't quite understand how all these things fit together. They're not going to go as far. They're not going to do as well as the guys who do understand how all these pieces integrate. So I'll always encourage you to at least start with some foundation learning in, C I would say, CCNA at a very bare minimum, or at least the, the uh, equivalent of the CCNA uh, curriculum, which is basic uh, routing and switching. Understand how, if, if you're going to go into IT, you know, learn those layers of the OSI model, and not so much just so that you can recite them at the bar and win beers, but <laughs> so that you actually understand that layer two is dealing with frames and, and, and how we begin to encapsulate things at layer two. And layer three, how, how and why IP is different than frames. And when we start talking about the WAN technologies, MPLS, frame relay, it now oh, frame, we just said that word. It helps you to understand where these technologies live. Okay? Understand that as you send information from a PC to a server, that little tiny beam, it gets wrapped, uh, what we call it, encapsulated by a whole bunch of different layers. Where as this little beam moves to the top of the stack at layer 7 in the application, all the way down to the very first layer, the physical layer before it gets sent over the wire as either uh, light um, uh, or as um, electrical uh, changes in, uh, in voltage, where we have adjacent layer interaction and same layer interaction as this thing shoots across from one device to another and back up, this, up the stack again. It's very important to understand how what you're doing is going to impact how that equipment is functioning with a server. So if you're on a PC, how it is interfacing with the server. If you're actually working with switches, how those switches, things are broken, what's going on? Well, let's check layer one connectivity first. Okay, we've got layer one connectivity. Do we have layer two connectivity? Is spanning tree broken? Understand these technologies. It will just it will make you better at what you do, whether you are working in systems or whether you're working as a network engineer or whether you're actually programming. Because when you're programming, what are you programming? Well, you're programming all the stuff that's going to make all the stuff work, right? So it's almost like being a doctor. Okay, you're a heart surgeon, um, but it, it, it really helps if you understand not just how the heart works, but how all the other stuff that connects to the heart works, right? You don't just go digging into somebody's heart without understanding how all their, uh, how the blood flows through and all the other things that a surgeon would need to know, right? So it just makes you better at what you do. So I will say at a very, very minimum, start with this foundation. The CCNA is what's gonna give you that foundation that's gonna help you build those other concepts on top. That make sense? And you might find that you really like this stuff. You might really get off on the, on the technology. And what I'd like to do is then 